hit the bounce a couple times. Later, right? Yeah. 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 Well, Bill, I'm delighted to be able to sign H.R. 3737 and appreciate all the help you've been, both in the other immigration bill and in 
Getting this one day absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm really honored, Mr. President. It's been a great year for the Immigration Committee and a great year for me. And I'm very pleased you're signing H.R. 3737. Done deed. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I really appreciate that. I think it's a good law. I'm delighted to. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you for coming down. Thank, Thank you. you. Souvenirs here. We couldn't afford to have these camps on the Those are comfortable. Thank you very much. And that is a bookmarker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Well, I think you and I have just a few minutes to talk that we should. Uh, I say I picked a lot of a fellow hand over and over and make some sort of time. That's it, sir. Or yes, sir. Nice president. to see you, sir. Hi. How are you? So nice to see you. What year are you at up there? I'm an upper junior. Oh, great. I was going to visit you with this. This? You've seen you. One more year to go. Ah. Junior. Yes. Nice. Guy. I've always remembered from when I was back, your age, that you'd be a standard mind that speakers at graduation would always use. You would address the graduating class and say, today, you know more than you have ever known before <laughs> or than you will ever know again. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it's a classic. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. I'll walk out of the because I'm coming up. Chair, the board. It's a pleasure to have you here, just as in play began in 1962 with Gil Hodges, Roger Craig, Gus Bell, Don Zimmer, and Marvin Thornberry leading the way. It was about a baseball rookie and his know-it-all manager. He had a lot of problems with him. But a crucial game in the pennant race, tied up in the bottom of what a distance J. Davy Johnson went, led by all-stars Gary Carter, who incidentally... Keith Hernandez, Daryl Strawberry, and Team 26 World Series. I waited until 1952 to pitch the games. <laughs> it was 
was in a movie. Yeah. And I had an edge on all of you here in the sense that I had the script in advance, so I knew it was going to come out. Are you going to give Congress the facts about Iran, or are you going to stonewall like the Democrats charge? I never talk about a no-hitter till it's over. Are you going to lay out the facts? Are you going to stonewall? Are you rewarding terrorism, Mr. President? Some of them are doing today. But, uh, <laughs> that was the last time we should have been around to refute it. <laughs> you wouldn't have done that. Not me. <laughs> no, I <laughs> know. Yeah, no, I would have done it. But I think you know that, right? That's the beauty of having a, uh, a party. Every column that uh, somebody doesn't like, you can always say, I know how you feel. Talk to Bob Novak about that one. <laughs> Uh, we're missing the chief. Chief Just, uh, He's on the phone. Mm -hmm. Well, how you doing, Mr. President? traveled far, but I believe that our meeting will bring us closer to overcoming one of the most serious challenges our country faces. And as you know by now, as I know you've been hearing from others, we're waging a battle against an enemy as insidious as any in our history. Illegal drugs have infiltrated our schools, invaded our factories, are terrorizing our citizens and undercutting our institutions. I'm encouraged by the progress that we've made since we began five years ago, but there's still a lot to do. Yesterday, I know Don Regan described to you the six goals of our national crusade to lead us toward a drug-free America. I've called for a sustained, relentless effort by every segment of society. We mean to free the user from drugs and to prevent others from becoming users. I believe the American people are willing to make it clear that illegal drug use will no longer be tolerated and are ready to support our fight to rid America of this deeply disruptive and corrosive evil. If this battle is to be won, and it must be, each and every one of us has to make a stand and get involved. Leadership and commitment must be evident not only in the White House and State Houses, but also in Congress, in the pulpit, in the Union Hall, in our schools, in the media, and yes, by you, our ambassadors who represent us around the world. You know all too well that drug abuse is not just an American problem. It's a critical worldwide problem. Internationally, the narco traffickers endanger our national security by weakening the authority of friendly governments and spewing a trail of terrorism, violence, and corruption. We've seen tragic evidence of that here in the Western Hemisphere just in recent times. We're starting to make some encouraging progress. The nations of the world are becoming aware of the danger to their own societies, and many of them are now taking strong action against the drug trafficker, overcoming what for many years were said to be insurmountable cultural, political, and logistical obstacles. There's increased cooperation between nations and a greater sense of urgency by the international community. Many of you have been at the forefront of this change, and I recognize the dangers you face and am proud of the work that you have done. We have to build on that progress. And we must convey to the rest of the world a sense of our own commitment to win this battle against drugs. So I'm asking you to take our message back with you. To the leaders of the various nations, I'm sending a personal message through with, with you. We will not tolerate the use or the supply of illegal drugs any place, any time. We mean to have a drug-free country, and we mean business. And I ask each of you to ensure 
that the fight against illegal drugs is a priority of your missions. Let there be no doubt that the priority is real. We'll be doing our part here at home, and I hope that you'll seek every opportunity to give visibility to U.S. anti-drug efforts. I know that as other countries realize the extent of our activities, they'll also find it easier to take the right states to fight drugs. And finally, we must offer a, a helping hand. Although each country has the responsibility, both to its own people and as international citizens, to eradicate this evil within its own boundaries, no one country can win this battle alone. We want all nations to join with us in this and make it a global crusade. When we stand together, united and committed to this cause, I think we represent a powerful force for humanity. And when that happens, there'll be no sanctuary on earth for those who are pilfering human dignity and pandering despair. So I'm counting on all of you. I'm looking forward to hearing your views now. Maybe you've heard enough from all of us at this time. Mr. President, is it true that you authorized sending a military supplies to Iran? I'm not supposed to take questions, but I will answer that one. Sam, at 8 o'clock tonight, tune in and you'll hear all. But you've been worried about the safety of the hostages when this story has been discussed. Why do you think it's possible for you to speak out at this time? Because you've all made it necessary for me to speak out in this time because I've never heard such dissemination of misinformation since I've been here as has been going on in the last several days. Will you listen able... in tonight and I'll correct everything. Yes, sir. Will you be able to assure the American people then tonight that you did not make a deal for the hostages? I'm not going to give anything away that I'm going to say tonight. Then you won't have to tune in. <laughs> tune in and hear it all. Mr. President, do you still consider Iran to be a prime sponsor of international terrorism? Tune in tonight. Thank you. So, sir, do you think that a mongoose should be used know. in a drug program? A what? A mongoose. <laughs> One of these countries here is suggesting that you use a mongoose to try to sniff out drugs. <laughs> Thank you. Nope. Someone here knows what I'm talking about. Talk to you later, Sam. I know what I'm talking about. Mongoose is a kill story. Roger, Roger Kipling. I wonder how they see on the press board. Why did they do that? Cobra and the Mongoose. Cobra and the Mongoose. <laughs> 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 You know, just before you start, someone would ask, once asked Sam what he'd do if he couldn't be on television. He said he'd go door to door. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, this group around the table is our ambassadors, your ambassadors in the respective countries, are the people on the firing line as far as dealing with the international dimensions of the problem are concerned. And they all have been working hard on it, and I think it's fair to say that bringing together and having this conference will stimulate them to do more. It's brought out a number of ideas that I think will be helpful. So it's part of an ongoing effort. Naturally, an idea that always comes to people when they sit around and decide what should be done is something for you to do. <laughs> <laughs> but what they would like as a kind of um, umbrella, you might say, for their own work now, is a message that goes from you to your counterpart in each country that calls attention to your own concern and Nancy's concern about this problem, your determination to work on it, 
the fact that you've had our ambassador here, along with others uh, in other countries, to uh, provide information and get ideas and so on. Uh, and in general, to get their attention. And underneath that umbrella, then uh, our ambassadors feel they will be able to make their efforts even more effective than they have been. We think also it's a way, and you might, do, at least with some countries, uh, work this in, to, in a sense, raise the stature of this issue. In some countries, it is regarded as essentially a police issue. And so uh, people engaged in law enforcement and interdiction efforts and things like that will meet and talk about it. But to get the ambassador from some haughty European country posted out someplace to dirty his or her hands with it is a little tough. So uh, uh, Dean Hinton, in fact, was suggesting that maybe we let people know that our ambassadors have as one of their primary charges one of the reasons they're there to do something about this, and maybe others, if they did likewise, would help the general effort. But they have some thoughts 